So, this is a forest classification for diurnal ulcer, this is all various types of ulcers that you can see for only the ulcers of 1, 1 A, 1 B and possibly 2 A we do clipping, the rest of the ulcers there is no need for a clipping. A infusion of pantoprazole at 8 mg per hour for 72 hours is recommended because it helps in clot stabilization and stops the bleed. So, this is how the management of upper GI bleed is endoscopy, first line therapy, stabilize, recommendation the world over all over the world the societies recommend for a variceal bleed you have a window of 24 hours because of the availability of drugs like terlipressin and octreotide to do the endoscopy. For a non variceal bleed it is a 12 hour window to go in and do the endoscopic therapy. What is the role of um, rebleed? Rebleed occurs in about 30 to 40 percent of duodenal ulcers if they have red signs or actively spurting while you go in. What is the role of interventional, radi interventional radiology? Active bleeding should be at least 1 cc per minute to identify the focus of bleed and embolize it. What is the role of tagged RBC scan? Very, very minimal nowadays. Surgery is still the last option. So, this is about GI bleed. GI bleed identification, referral to an emergency department as early as possible. Interventional in the form of an endoscopic therapy as early as possible is required. So, therapy uh, goals of therapy for a lower GI bleed. The ABCs again arrange and transfuse blood, target hemoglobin 8 to 10, 8 for non cardiac patients, 10 for cardiac patients. We do not aim at a higher blood hemoglobin. Endoscopic therapy versus interventional radiology therapy, the last option is always surgery. Foreign body in the esophagus, this is a common problem. You, you, you are winding up on Saturday evening, going, your wife has called you somewhere, and then the call comes. Boy has swallowed a coin, end of your evening. Now, the problem is most people after they swallow the coin, they give them bananas, they give them all sorts of things before they send them to the ER. Now, I have to wait the next 8 hours till the stomach is empty for me to do the endoscopy. So, if somebody sees a foreign body in the esophagus, especially in the esophagus, please do not give them anything, just send them to the emergency. The farther away the last meal is from the time of the foreign body injection, the easier it is for us to intervene because most of these are children. And if it is an adult, somehow you can take a risk, go in and remove the foreign body. But a pediatric case always requires an anesthesia and I have to wait that critical 6 hours before I take up the case. Suppose somebody has swallowed a foreign body and just yesterday evening I was winding up and then as usual a 6 year old boy was swallowing pill playing with a 5 a rupee coin, he comes in with a foreign body injection. And then I knew I was saved because the boy did not have dysphagia, he did not have any hoarseness or any difficulty. I got an x-ray done, the coin was sitting somewhere here. So, I said, boss, go home in two days, the 5 rupees will be out of the system, do not worry about it. So, the critical thing is if it crosses the upper esophageal sphincter, if it crosses the lower esophageal sphincter, most foreign bodies follow the law of the intestine, they, they usually come out. Even if it is a sharp foreign body, many a times we leave it because it comes out in a day or two. Okay, so, the, the crux is if it is caught anywhere in between this, then you have to intervene and get it out. I will tell you a couple of cases where I had trouble. Person comes to you with his child having swallowed a foreign body. My question to them three question, three times repeatedly I ask, is it a foreign body, is the coin or is it a button battery? Coin or a button battery? Coin or a button battery? Because there have been instances where people have swallowed button battery. Just yesterday I was watching the Vion News. They were mentioning about these button batteries causing trouble. So, what happens is people think that this is a coin and they do the x-ray, they say okay, it will go away, we will wait. And these button batteries, if they get stuck in any place, they erode because the acid leaks, the alkali leaks and they erode through and they can perforate the esophagus and it becomes a sort of a very catastrophic injury. So, you should always make sure through the history that it is not a button battery because a button battery makes it imperative that you do the procedure as early as possible. So, these are easy to remove though the coins, this is how they are, they are stuck. We have we have equipments called rat tooth forceps, we have snares, we have the nets through which we can remove this. It is very easy, this is how a coin looks. But the biggest problem if they are not sure in the history is you never know whether it is a button battery or a coin till you go in and remove it. The other foreign bodies that we see is large foot bolus impactions like this sometimes dentures with sharp edges and uh, they somehow with some ease they cross the GE junction. When you go in and struggle to pull it out of the stomach, it never comes out. Mm -hmm. So, it is better once it crosses the GE junction, if there is no sharp edges, leave it alone, it will pass through the GI tract and come out. It is called the law of the intestine, even pins have come out with without causing any perforation. So, the law of intestine, 
is a very broad law. It says that whatever the object with a, which is sharp nail, it goes along the longitudinal flow. The only other place where it can get stuck is the ileocecal junction, but nevertheless, I always keep my surgeon in the loop when I see a sharp foreign body which I left in the stomach, telling that if the child or the person comes back in the middle of the night with a pain, then we probably have to intervene. So, these are various foreign bodies again. The biggest drawback of a fishbone foreign body is somebody does an x-ray, you can't see it. I mean, you will have to, you know, become a radiologist to look at a fishbone here, I can't make out. So, they show some, some shadow very clearly a small thin line here, but you can see that it is sitting here and it is about to erode through the wall of the esophagus and it, these are very difficult foreign bodies to remove. Sometimes the esophagus is like this, the fishbone is sitting like this. Now, how do you pull it out? So, many a times I have just turned it to one side, pushed it into the stomach, then used a net and pulled it out. So, it's sometimes we have to do all these circles. The most difficult endoscopy for a gastroenterologist is always a foreign body. You will have to struggle with the foreign body because sometimes they get stuck. So, this is just a brief on what you do for uh, foreign bodies, but the basic tenet is if it is stuck anywhere in the esophagus, you need to go in and remove it and you have to make sure that there is no stricture below. So, once I remove a foreign body, I always go with an endoscope, make sure that the upper GI tract is clean. So, acute abdomen, it is again my surgical colleagues purview, but when they present, you should keep these things in mind in these particular areas of the abdomen. If it is a right upper quadrant, it is a cholecystitis, pyelonephritis, ureteric colic, if it is radiating from loin to groin, sometimes pneumonias can cause this, hepatitis and of course, liver abscesses, something we commonly do not think of. If it is on the left upper quadrant, it is an ulcer disease, again a pyelonephritis, colic or a pneumonia of the left lung. If it is a right lower quadrant, these are the differential diagnosis that you think of. If it is a left lower quadrant, these are the differential diagnosis that you should think of. But the most dangerous abdominal emergency that I see is a mesenteric ischemia. Mesenteric ischemia is something patient is writhing in pain, but you do not find any clinical signs. You know, when there is more symptoms, symptoms disproportionate to the signs. Always think of an ischemia. When do you suspect an intestinal? So, intestinal ischemia is suspected in the right category of patients. An elderly patient who has diabetes, who is CKD, who has got ischemic heart disease. This is a good concoction to have a thromboembolic disease or a ischemia of the intestine just like a heart attack. So, you should keep this in mind. Rarely you, you come across this abdominal aortic aneurysm and other rare causes for acute abdomen. But the common things are always common. Keep it in mind when the signs are less and symptoms are more, always think of mesenteric ischemia in the correct group of patients. This again a broader thing about the same, there is something else which I want to mention about dysphagia. Elderly people sometimes come with acute dysphagia with a foreign bolus impaction or you know, you know this is just nothing but a tablet which is impacted in a mid esophageal stricture. So, they will be having either a post radiotherapy stricture or a post GERD related stricture and one foreign body impacts into that. Be before that, they would be somehow managing to swallow food. So, this is an acute dysphagia or an underlying some small narrowing which can be because of a previous injury to the esophagus in the form of GRD, in the form of radiation or in the form of some other corrosive injury which has happened during childhood. They would be functioning very well, but some foreign body goes and sits there. That is again a difficult foreign body to remove, mostly the food bolus foreign bodies because you go and catch it with the snare, it breaks. You go and catch it with a snare, it breaks. So, in such cases, what we do is we go in with the endoscope, blow the air, we widen the esophagus a little bit and push it down into the stomach so that it gets digested and goes away. Once it crosses the G junction, the problem is mostly solved. Mm -hmm.